What's up, Urban Acolyte family? My name is Prince, and I'm an Urban Acolyte, and this is going to be another episode of Star Wars Chats. And the topic for this particular chat has to do with these Mandalorian Jedi. And I apologize if I seem kind of washed out. Um, my sinuses are still pretty messed up. And I'll just be honest with you guys. Uh, somebody close to me is dealing with a situation and I'm doing that weird Jedi thing where I like pick up on, um, kind of their emotional state. And, uh, it's, it's kind of dragged me down. And with, uh, the other person, I don't want to say who, um, if you pay attention to the videos or you know me, uh, on a bit of a personal level, it, it won't be hard to guess who I'm talking about. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm here for you. If you're watching this video, um, you might not be able to given what's going on at home and that somebody is not the biggest fan of me, but yo, I'm, I'm here for you in whatever way you need, um, you know, whenever you need me, uh, this is, there, there's a real life Jedi lesson here. And, and this is going to pertain to what I'm going to talk about in the video. Um, for those of you who, you know, haven't already clicked off, but you know, uh, sometimes, you know, it's like people talk about why I want to be a Sith. How, how can I be like a Sith? And I'm like, why do you want to like follow the dark side? Why do you want to, uh, like focus on your passions or your happiness. And there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, you know, like to get the things that you want in life to, to be happy. Um, sometimes that involves other people being in pain, like hurting other people. And there's a natural process to that, right? Uh, in order to grow, you have to have like a breakdown before you can have a breakthrough, right? Growth requires that something, um, dies, right? And, and is reborn, right? So, so you do have to go through pain sometimes, but to like, uh, willingly or not care, um, to, to like completely, uh, ignore that someone will have to deal, go through some suffering in order, even, even for them, if it's, you know, for them to get in a better place, they have to suffer, right? Uh, for me, I don't, it's, it's my philosophy, right? You have to be conscious of that. Um, you have to show compassion, even, even when you say, look, you're in a bad place and to get to a better place, you're going to have to suffer. You're going to have to deal with some pain. You're going to have to struggle, but you know, in the long run, it, it might be worth it, right? You, you won't have to deal with this situation, but then, you know, you have to deal with another situation, right? It's always that struggle. And I say this, um, as it pertains to this talk, Star Wars Rebels, if you saw the, uh, most recent, um, clip or the trailer for this weekend's episode of star wars rebels you see sabine is being trained uh to fight with the dark saber uh, kanan is training her to fight and he's taunting her he's telling her she should quit um and we know that sabine is a capable fighter it's funny this is going to start this is going to add some fire to the fuel that uh sabine is ray's mother but honestly the people well, I don't know, maybe some of you are hardcore Urban Acolyte fans, but I think that the people who are big fans of that fan speculation have probably already clicked off of this video because they're like, dude, you're talking about real life stuff and not Star Wars and fuck you, Prince. I hate when you do that and your channel sucks. <laughs> whatever, whatever, dog. But what I was saying, what I was getting at is we know that Sabine is a capable fighter. Uh, she's, uh, hey, she, she gone toe to toe and thrown blows with with uh, two Imperial officers. She showed out on Geonosis with her jetpack and her blasters. And now she's struggling in this lightsaber fight with Kanan. And I said that sort of mirrors Rey in The Force Awakens, right? I said I was going somewhere with that because Rey is a capable fighter. We, we you know, she she's skilled with um, melee weapons with her staff. And then when she gets in that lightsaber fight with Kylo Ren at the end of the movie, she's just wild, right? She's just 
thrash thrusting all over the place right and that's important because you know back in the summer it was and even this time last year because i was getting the stuff about ray must be a palpatine she fights like palpatine way before the the ray palpatine theory ever came up i i I took that moment to address that but i'd been hearing that and if you get bored go look in the comments from like last january last february last march people were saying that to me right um but to get where sabine wants to be to to unite uh these these different mandalorian clans that didn't side with um uh, that didn't side with clan Vizsla or house Vizsla and join the empire or the people who are, uh, you know, begrudgingly part of the empire, the imperial structure of Mandalore, right? Sabine's got to go through some pain in order to get where she wants. It's like my granddad uh, used to tell me uh, when I first, when I joined the military, he said, you know, uh, sometimes in life to get where you want to be, you got to go places you don't want to go. Right. You got to be places you don't want to be. You got to do things that you don't want to do to get what you want and to get where you want out of life. That's a lesson to you young kids who just want everything handed to you. Right. I see it on YouTube all the time. Prince, give me a shout out. Watch my channel. And I'm like, nobody gave me shot. I didn't ask anybody for shout outs. You know, when the stupendous wave started shouting me out this time a year ago. I, I, I'm be honest. I didn't know who he was because I didn't watch. I watched Dash and Emergency Awesome, and that was the extent of uh, my knowledge of Star Wars uh, YouTube creators. And a lot of people blew up like last year, so they weren't even around. Um, you know, a year in 2014 um, and parts of 2015 leading up to the Force Awakens. All right now, uh, let me get back to this Mandalorian Jedi thing because I've rambled on for like eight minutes now. Uh, well, I did talk about Sabine, but we got the clip from Re Rebels Recon where we get the history of the Darksaber, right? So uh, Finn Rao is talking to Kanan and he says that the Darksaber is one of a kind and it dates back to over a millennia ago. So this is the time of the Old Republic um, before the Bane Order of Sith, right? And there was one Mandalorian who became a Jedi that was Ta Vizsla. Uh, he might be the patriarch of uh of house Vizsla for for all we know he became a jedi and he created the dark saber right and um i i don't remember uh everything that was said but i'm guessing after his passing the jedi kept uh his the the dark saber on coruscant at the the jedi temple there uh, members of House Vizsla raided the Jedi Temple and stole the Darksaber. And you guys have heard this if you watched, if you saw that clip. And it became a symbol of, um, of, of Mandalore, of the, the true leader of Mandalore. And so this is what I said. Um, I think I said it in Geekdom's video and it got cut. I may have said it in a video on my channel. I, I don't, I can't keep track of conversations that I have anymore because I have so many of them now. But I said, if someone asked me on Twitter, if um, this picture in Thrawn's office was a picture of Mandalore, the ultimate. And I said, well, from first off, we don't know if there actually was a Mandalore, the ultimate. That's to my knowledge, that's something that Bioware, uh, the Bioware team created, you know, for the Knights of the Old Republic games. Um, if there's somewhere else in Legends, um, I never claim to be an expert on Legends. Everything I know about Legends comes from playing uh, the Bioware video games, right? Uh, so what I said was if there was a Mandalore, the ultimate, it would make sense to me that he was, uh, that he or she, that they were a child of the Force, right? Because think about it. If a, a child of the Force is just someone who's gifted, and if you have a Mandalorian culture that's based on a warrior culture, the best warrior is going to be gifted, right? It doesn't mean that they've had Jedi training or that they're using Force abilities. They're just gifted, right? They're they're physically uh, superior. They're the superior warrior, right? Think about someone who's 
faster, stronger, has faster reflexes. They know what's going to happen before it happens, right? They're just, they're just going to be better. And we just have to accept that, right? That's the same reason that I think Finn is a child of the force, because when you read about his stormtrooper uh, training uh, with the first order, he's just, he's just better than everyone else, right? He's in the 99th percentile, the top 1% of all stormtroopers to have gone through training. He's, he's just better, right? And that's the same way I would look at a Mandalore the ultimate. So I said, okay, what if you have this Mandalore the ultimate? Um, maybe, maybe the Mandalorian culture was influenced by another order of force users. And I'm going to bring that up later because there is evidence. Well, I won't say evidence of that, but there is another order of force users that has been introduced that outside of just the Jedi and the Sith and the Night Sisters, right? I'm gonna come back to that. Okay, so I mentioned in my last video that if you look at the mural um, on Mandalore in the background when Maul and uh, Palpatine are having their duel, you see that there is some kind of standoff between uh, the Mandalorians and the Jedi. And at the time, I think I said, I think that's a mural of them actually stealing the Darksaber. But um, as the the shot uh, zoomed out and Palpatine is, you know, using the force lightning on Maul uh, to knock him out before he takes him uh, to uh, Stygian Prime uh, so that they can extract the location of Mother Towson. That's all in the uh, Son of Dathomir comic book. Uh, it looks more like they're having a standoff and someone is actually holding that dark saber. So what I'm wondering is maybe uh, this uh, Ta Vizsla, maybe he didn't always stay a Jedi. Maybe he went back to Mandalore um, or, you know, someone another Mandalorian came, rose up, stole the dark saber. And then there was a, a war or a battle, uh, with the Jedi, or that's just to show that they have some kind of hostility with the Jedi. And a question that we need to have is why do the Mandalorians, why is there that hostility with the Jedi? And it seems that it existed before, before Ta Vizsla, cause it sounds like that was like a, uh, a big thing. It was a big deal that Ta Vizsla became a Mandalorian Jedi, right? Um, so we've got to, we've got to question that. And I'm going to go back to this mural, uh, this painting that, uh, Thrawn has, because in that, I, when I looked at it, I said, I think that that is a force using Mandalorian, right? You see someone, you see a lightsaber, uh, and another shot of the painting, I saw a blaster. There were two people falling and it looked like, look, it doesn't matter if you've got blasters or uh, lightsabers, this person, this Mandalore, the ultimate, maybe, maybe that was Ta Vizsla, right? They will overcome all, right? It doesn't matter if you're a Jedi, if you're some kind of smuggler, right? This is the ultimate warrior, right? And I think that, that, Thrawn would have that because he's interested in understanding Mandalorian culture. Sabine Wren is a Mandalorian. She is uh, Clan Wren, uh, House Vizsla. So that is in her heritage. That is going to be meaningful for her. And Thrawn is one of these people who wants to get into your head, understand your culture, understand your art, um, try to put you together so that he can then begin to take you apart piece by piece. All right. Now, I mentioned that I think the Mandalorians may have been influenced by another group of Force users. So in the Dr. Aphra comic book, we learn that her father is one of these uh, Church of the Force type dudes, but he follows, he is uh, in, interested in uncovering the history of a group called the Ordu Aspectu. So the Order, the Aspectu Order or something like that. Or do aspect to. And we don't really know their history. All that we know is that they were seeking immortality. They had some kind of standoff against with the Jedi. Um, the, the, the Jedi, um, may have been, uh, trying to free Padawans that were, uh, part of some ritual or some sacrifice. Maybe we really don't know. Um, this is all, you know, 
uh, Dr. Afra and her father trying to piece together their versions of history. But uh, there appeared to have been some kind of standoff and the Ordu Aspectu were wiped out uh, by the Jedi, possibly. Um, I'm going to say that Supreme Leader Snoke might have some connection to them. And uh, I'm going to go out on a further limb and say that uh, knowing all of this makes me start to wonder if Ray might be... Um, uh, Dr. Afra's daughter, right? And, they, and, and that's crazy. I may f try to flesh that out and do a video on it uh, next week. Uh, if I can have time to sit down over the weekend and, and put my thoughts together. But I think it's interesting that, uh, like this Dr. Afra comic book seems to be, uh, have this storyline investigating this ancient order of force users. Her father is some kind of, uh, Church of the Force type dude, uh, operating, uh, during the, between the events of A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. And he believes that there's going to be some kind of spiritual awakening of the Force that will, um, strike a return of the Jedi, the Sith, uh, and, and, and this Ordu Espectu, right? And he thinks that the key to doing that is to unlock whatever their, uh, quest or their secret to immortality was. Um, so that's interesting. Another thing to think about, and I talked about this in a video a long time ago, is uh, the Lando Calrissian comic book, right? Uh, there was that mask that was in Palpatine's ship in kind of the shrine area that was corrupting people, right? It corrupted the Red Guard. It corrupted those Panther dudes that were running around with lightsabers trying to kill Lando and um, and his homeboy with the the computer implants and the little freaking Ugnot, um, uh, arche archaeologist researcher that was with him. Uh, the little Ugnot dude did get corrupted by the mask and then the Panther guys killed him. Um, but I think I talked about that in a video, maybe on like the Knights of Ren or something. I don't remember. Cause I said, you know, where may it, it actually, I, I introduced that thought there too. I said, maybe the Mandalorians were influenced by the Sith but maybe the Mandalorians are actually influenced by this Ordu Aspectu, and that's where they get their mask from, right? Because uh, the Kylo Ren's helmet, what the Knights of Ren wear, it says that this is part of uh, the the Knights of Ren, um, like their their de it's their design, right? And I said, well, where did they get their design from? Who do they come from, right? And so if we look at the Knights of Ren as being um, an order like a religious order because they're the religious or the mystical arm of the first order. And Snoke is part of that. And you, and it, you know, we, we think that they have ties to the Mandalorians. What if the Mandalorians have ties to another group of force users, force wielders, right? And so, I mean, it's only natural. Anyone can be a child of the force, but if you have, <laughs> if you have this Mandalorian culture and they were once some other order of force users that fell out. The Jedi tried to crush them and said, we're not going to allow these guys to study the force. And then this Ta Vizsla guy comes up and we say, okay, we're going to call a truce. We're going to teach this guy to become a Jedi. We're going to reintroduce, uh, uh, the, the, the Jedi training or force training to the Mandalorians. And then it just all goes bad, right? It, it goes sour. Um, that, that's something interesting to think about. And that might be why the, the Jedi kept the dark sabers. That was symbolic of them withholding that knowledge from, um, the Mandalorian culture again. And that, you know, there could, we could get all into why the Mandalorians and the Jedi like don't get along, which goes back to that, uh, mural, on Mandalore that we hate the Jedi the, uh, and the Jedi hate us. And this uh, dark saber, whoever has that is the, the true leader of Mandalore. And that's uh, they've, they've literally, they've got knowledge that's they, they've got this physical symbol of knowledge that's been withheld from us. So that's uh, interesting things to think about. Uh, but what do you guys think about all of this and what are you looking forward to in, uh, in learning in uh, this episode where Sabine is going to be training with the Darksaber. And then when uh, Rebels picks up from their break um, in mid-February, when we actually see uh, uh, Sabine go to uh, her home planet to reunite with her mother. 
and attempt to unite these Mandalorian clans. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, and I'll be checking back to see what you guys have to say. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click on the subscribe button so that you can take your first steps towards becoming an urban acolyte. Use your love for Star Wars to uh, help you make positive changes in your life and in the community around you. Make sure to continue to support the channel by checking out some of the other videos and uh, sharing these with your friends who are interested in uh, in uh, deeper conversations about Star Wars. But that's all I've got for now. So thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing. May the force be with you always.